Welcome to the Sirius Seminar for March 27th, 2019. Today we're honored to have with us Professor Wei Zhang, who uh, comes to us from the University of Missouri, Columbia. Uh, Dr. Zhang is an expert in secure multi-party computation and uh, particularly techniques for making this practical in the real world, uh, dating back to his dissertation, which looked at uh, problems in kind of the, the real world uh, requirements for secure multi-party computation to be uh, to actually be useful and solve real problems, uh, as opposed to some of the kind of either went overboard on what people needed for security or didn't go far enough. Uh, uh, Professor Xiang has a distinguished career. He's recently joined the University of Missouri at Columbia, having spent several years at Missouri Institute of Science and Technology. Uh, but before that, uh, he did his undergraduate work at University of Iowa. His graduate work was done right here at Purdue. Uh, as a serious student, uh, this, is, this is where you could end up. Uh, he was affiliated with Sirius and active in Sirius when he was here. And uh, th so we're really excited and, and pleased to have him back and joining us. So I will turn it over to Wei, who will be talking about some, some new things that are happening that he is developing in, uh, in secure computation. So thank you, Professor Clinton, for the introduction. And uh, I'm very happy to be home again. So uh, I, I think this is a great place. I have really a profound memory about you know, Purdue. So it's always appreciated you know, the chance, opportunity to be back uh, to share you know, some of the work you know, we are doing at the moment. So, uh, so the main topic is going to be uh, secure multi-party computation. Uh, in particular, uh, we want to talk about uh, some of the, uh, uh, you know, how to design, you know, more efficient, you know, secure uh, comparison techniques. Right. So that's the main topic. Uh, if you have any question, you can stop me any moment, right? Uh, and so I can clarify any question you may have. Uh, just a quick question here. Uh, anyone? Uh, do you have uh, some background in secure multi-party computation? Anyone here has something? <laughs> right. So if not, that's okay. Uh, some of the details may be uh, a little bit uh, too much, uh, but. Hopefully, I can give you uh, some general idea regarding uh, what is secure you know, multi-party computation. You know what are the main, uh, you know, concepts, uh, you know, definitions uh, underlying you know the SMC concept. Okay, so uh, so here is the uh, motivation uh, regarding you know, why I'm doing uh, secure comparison. Uh, so many organizations, right, they want to all source data right to a cloud. Uh, for example, uh, in this example here, the healthcare organization, you know, can outsource the medical data uh, to the cloud, right? Then the cloud can do, uh, you know, data analytics and then send the result back, you know, to whoever, you know, querying the data. So, uh, but the problem, you know, by doing this, uh, you know, there are a couple uh, challenges here. You know, one, uh, the data may contain uh, sensitive information right uh, so especially for uh, medical data and, and then another thing the cloud cannot be fully you know trusted right because uh, you know there's some insider you know threat right so unhappy employee you know can grab the encryption key you know get the data you know sell to other parties uh, another one a security breach can happen right so they can the uh, the, the intruder can get the data uh, so to violate you know privacy right so <coughs> So because this problem, you know, we need to, um, you know, have a solution that can protect the sensitivity or the privacy, uh, you know, of the medical data or personal data. <coughs> so how do we uh, protect the privacy? So these are some of the common techniques out there. I'm not saying common. The first one definitely not common, right? So the ideal solution, right? The ideal solution is where, uh, you know, we have a trusted third party, right? If we trust someone, completely and then the data can send to that organization that party the party can analyze it and then get the result back right this is so called the ideal solution right why it's called ideal because under this model you can maximize the data protection right that's why it's called the ideal 
but may not be, uh, I mean, I don't think it's practical because how are you going to find someone, you know, everybody can trust, right? <coughs> so another solution, kind of like data, you know, perturbation technique, right? You can perturb the data so that the server, uh, you know, won't learn the sensitive information, uh, but maybe at the same time, some of the statistical information can still be preserved and, you know, the cloud can still apply uh, or analyze data, you know, for the organization, you know, who need the results. Uh, another technique called the uh, searchable encryption, right? So uh, you transform data in a certain way such that the data can still be searched uh, by the cloud and get you the result outcome. Uh, the next one is called the uh, fully homomorphic encryption. Uh, so the basic idea is that you can encrypt data and then on top of the encrypted data, you can do addition, multiplication, without ever decrypting the data. So if we can perform you know, these two operators, right, addition and multiplication, then you can perform any operation you know, purely based on the encrypted data. Right? So you, I mean, the cloud don't even need to see any the real data, original data, so to, fully, to fully protect the, uh, the security of the data. Uh, the, the last one, at least here, is called the uh, secure multi-party computation. Right, and so so the goal of the secure multi-party computation, right, is actually, uh, you know, to accomplish the same outcome, you know, as if, uh, you know, there were a, a trusted third party. So so basically, uh, we can develop, you know, SMC or secure multi-party computation uh, protocol to replace, you know, the need of uh, a trusted third party. Okay, that's the goal of SMC. Okay, so uh, please, uh, you can stop me anytime if you have any questions. <coughs> So what's the problem of, of SMC? You know, one problem is the, uh, the generic solution uh, is not very efficient. Uh, by generic, uh, we, I mean uh, the, the garbage circuit approach. So I mentioned, I will point that out a little bit later, give you a little bit more detail on that. Uh, and then the data become, uh, the big data become even bigger, right? And so, so the, the scalability, uh, you know, is become uh, worse and worse due to the large amount of data we have. Uh, another problem is the uh, uh, you know the SMC requires you know at least two or three you know independent servers, right? Sometimes maybe hard to find even one server, right? So now we need to find like two or three servers. So uh, you know that become a could become a challenging problem. So uh, so over go here uh, you know the main problem here is the efficiency. We want to uh, you know somehow to improve the computation uh, efficiency, right? How do we do that? Uh, you know, many of the, uh, you know, data analytical, you know, tasks, you know, based on comparison, right? So think about the k-nearest neighbor queries, right? The range queries, right? The, you know, similarity computation, right? So all these are based on comparison operator. So, so the efficiency of the comparison, the secure comparison, you know, can affect the efficiency of uh, more advanced, you know, SMC protocol. So, so that's the reason if we can somehow right, improve the efficiency of SMC, the comparison, and then hopefully we can uh, increase the efficiency of you know, more advanced protocol, right? That's the goal here. So that's one of the reasons why we are looking at the comparison protocol uh, in particular. All right, so here's our contribution of our current work, right? So we want to develop you know, highly efficient uh, SMC uh, comparison protocols. Right, so what do we mean by comparison? Right, that's easy. Right, you have two numbers. Let's say A and B. Uh, you want to return, uh, you know, one means A is greater than B, and zero otherwise. Right, so this is a very normal, you know, standard, you know, comparison operator. So, uh, how do we achieve the efficiency we need compared to the existing solution? Right, we combine, you know, several, you know, strategies. Right, the first one. Uh, we are using additive, you know, secret sharing, right? The traditional technique, they use the Samir the secret sharing, right? Samir secret sharing is based on the polynomial. Uh, it's a little bit uh, computationally uh, intensive. Uh, so additive secret sharing is very easy and uh, simple to compute. Another idea we use is called the, you know, protocol, uh, you know, asymmetry, right? So uh, many of the existing work, you know, the protocol is symmetric you know, among all the parties. Everybody doing the same thing, based on their share. So I will give you one example a, a little bit later. Another one, uh, another technique we use is called the uh, dynamic, you know, group switching, you know, for different, you know, share sizes. So why we want to switch different groups? Uh, the reason being uh, in group of, you know, if the value in the group of <coughs> zero and one, 
So all the computation in that group can be done locally, you know, between, uh, you know, among these parties, right? So we want to maximize the computation in the group of so-called Z2. So Z2 means, you know, 0 and 1, right? So again, uh, more example will come. <coughs> so by doing that, you know, we are able to uh, decrease the, the order of the complexity, you know, as well as the, the magnitude of the uh, dominating, you know, term coefficient. Right, so we'll share some of the outcome we have, you know, at the end of the, the protocol. Okay, so here is the overview of our design. And so this is the rest of the talk. And so I'll give you some background and then talk about the design of our protocol. And then I will highlight some of the future uh, in the research direction. <coughs> so any question you have so far? Or can you hear me well? Yes. So just the, the last thing you said, basically you're saying you're both reducing the the degree of the polynomial and the constant factor in your complexity. So I'm I'm reducing like the uh, the order of the complexity. Like order means like you know from uh, you know n cube you know to like n power two, right? That's kind of reducing uh, the order uh, and coefficient. You know sometimes the, under the big O notation they hide the, the coefficient, right? Like, the, you know, big O n sometimes could be, you know, big O 1,000 times n. So we reduce the 1,000 by, for example, it could be, you know, instead of 1,000, it can be 100. So that's what we mean by reducing the coefficient as well. I'm not sure if I answer. Yeah. Okay. So we we'll try to reduce both, but hopefully we got the job done. <coughs> All right, so some background, right? So when we design uh, secure protocols, uh, like, uh, you know, under the SMC uh, setting, uh, first thing we have to understand, what is the uh, adversary model? So by adversary model, we mean uh, the behavior, you know, for the, among the participating parties, right? So, uh, you know, in the <coughs> SMC protocol, you know, all the SMC protocol require uh, you know, several participating parties, right? So they need to communicate, uh, they need to collaborate to perform, you know, some of the computations, right? So their behavior uh, directly determines, you know, what kind of security guarantee we have. So among all the adversary models, uh, the most common one is called the semi-honest, semi right? What that means is that, you know, every party who participates in the computation, they follow, you know, the, the steps, uh, required by the protocol, right? So if I have a secure comparison protocol, the protocol is going to tell, you know, the party, let's say Alice and Bob, right? So they, the, the protocol is going to say, Alice, you do the folding computation. And then the protocol is going to say, Bob, you do the folding computation, right? So if Alice and Bob are semi-honest, you know, they're going to follow whatever the protocol, you know, uh, informs them to do, okay? That's called, a, you know, semi-honest. Uh, another one called the... Uh, Malicious. Malicious means like the party can behave uh, in any way, right? So they can refuse to participate, right? So if we ask them, okay, so to execute my protocol, but they can refuse, right? I don't want to do that, right? So that's a part of the uh, behavior under the malicious model. So anything, so they can behave arbitrarily to compromise the security, right? That's called the uh, malicious adversary model. Another one called the covert. So covert means, uh, you know, malicious behavior can be detected. Right, you don't have to prevent them from happening, but uh, you know this can be protected. Mm -hmm. I mean, can be detected, right? If you run, you know, some of the uh, verifi verification protocol, right, to do that. Uh, so uh, you probably can tell, right? So the protocol is secure under the same honest model is generally more efficient uh, because you're assuming they can behave, you know, according to the protocol, right? So you have you don't have to prevent them from, uh, you know, diverge from the normal execution of the protocol. So the protocol secure under the malicious model can be very expensive because you have to add additional computation to force them, to force the party to follow the protocol, right? So I'm not going to uh, you know, give you the details, but just some kind of intuition behind you know, why the protocols you know, can be very efficient you know, under the same honest model. <coughs> so uh, to uh, prove security, all right, how do we prove, uh, prove security uh, for SMC protocols? We generally compare the protocol you develop right, to the uh, ideal solution. Right? I, I mentioned about the ideal solution, ideal solution where you know, everybody trusts uh, 
a party, right? They trust a third party, right? And give the party the information, then the party can analyze everything for us, right? For comparison, right? The Edison Bob can give the their number uh, to a trusted party. The party can compare and then send the outcome back to Edison Bob, right? So this is the ideal solution. So if we design a secure comparison protocol, we need to analyze the information leakage between the two uh, models, right? So the real model, the ideal model. The real model is the one you know where you execute your own uh, protocol, right? You develop a new protocol, you're executing that. So, so in this pic picture here, the real model, everybody is sending the message, right? So th this message is sent required by the protocol. So if we can s analyze the information leakage between these two models the same, and then we say the protocol you develop is really secure. Okay, so how do we say they are the same? You know, depend on the, the computational model. So you know, one, uh, you, know, you know, if they are computationally indistinguishable, you can say the same, right? If the adversary uh, has a limited computing power, right? If the adversary doesn't, uh, I mean, they have unlimited computing power, then to prove they are the same, you have to say, you know, they are, uh, you know, uniformly, uh, you know, random, right? So these two execution, they are purely random. So you cannot really tell the difference regardless how many, how much computing power they have. So here is just an example, you know, the bad guy, the adversary cannot tell the information leakage between the two. And then we say the protocol under the real model, the one you design is really secure. <coughs> Right, so what are the uh, approaches, right, uh, under SMC, the building blocks? The one of the building block is the, the Yaus, you know, Galbraith uh, circuit, right? So I mentioned about the uh, comparison. Actually, the comparison problem uh, is also the one introduced by uh, Yaus, you know, famous uh, millionaire uh, problem. I don't know if you read that paper. And so, so the two millionaires right, want, want to learn who is richer, but they don't want each other to know how much money they have. So, so that's the kind of like the secure comparison protocol can get a job done. So this is the first classic example uh, to motivate the secure multi-party computation, right? So in his paper, uh, he suggested, you know, the, the Garbrot in a circular approach. So this approach is, uh, so early on I said about the generic solution, you know, it's not very efficient. So the Garbrot circular is considered to be a generic solution, right? So uh, the technique here is that we know how to evaluate the, you know, the AND gate or the SOR gate, you know, any logical gate, you know, security, right? If we can do that, we can evaluate any, you know, garbage circuit, any circuit, right? Boolean circuit security. So any polynomial function can be represented by a Boolean circuit. So that's why you can evaluate any function security, right? This is called the uh, generic solution. But this solution is not very efficient, you know, still. Okay, generally speaking, right, it's not very efficient, but they are efficient for smaller input size, right? The smaller input size give you a reasonable size circuit, right? If you have large data, then the circuit become, you know, intractable, the size. Mm -hmm. uh, another solution called the homomorphic encryption, right? This one is different from the uh, fully homomorphic encryption, right? I mentioned about the fully homomorphic, but this one is only, uh, you know, most times people use uh, additive, you know, homomorphic encryption, right, by uh, Palier as an example. Um, but this one, uh, the communication cost is very high. Reason being, uh, if you want to uh, encrypt one single bit, for example, right, so one bit of data, you have to use a, a key size of, uh, of, let's say, 2048 bits to ensure the security. So, so after the encryption, your data size become, you know, 2,000 times more than before, right? So clearly, uh, you know, the, you pay the overhead, and you know, this is kind of too much, depending on the size of the data you have. So another approach called the uh, secret sharing, right? So secret sharing uh, doesn't have the problem of the homomorphic encryption. Uh, you know, you can, if the data is one bit, you could generate share with the same size. You know, you can generate two random bits to represent, you know, one single bit, right? You just double the size instead of, you know, 2,000 times more than, you know, the original data size, right? But here, uh, the secret sharing has a problem of, you know, requiring at least three parties, right? You need to have three parties to do all the computation. I can, I can mention, I will tell you a little bit more just a little bit later. And then another problem is the, uh, the rounds of communication. Right, so if you use secret sharing, then uh, most often you have a, a, a number wrong you have to go through to finish the computation, right? So many of the research, uh, even for comparison protocol, secure comparison protocol, 
uh, currently, uh, people look at how do we design a conversion protocol you know, with constant wrong communication. Right? So the, the more wrong we have, you know, the, uh, the, the more errors, right? the network you know, problem can play into a picture. Right? You, you really want to reduce the number of uh, rounds of communication. Right? So establishing communication you know, can be an expensive uh, you know, operation as well. Okay, so, th so that's why the goal we have, we want to uh, use the secret sharing, but without the complexity of the secret sharing, right? And so we want to design something uh, is a constant run, the comparison protocol as a constant run, comparison protocol, and uh, more efficient than the existing solution, right? That's our goal here. Okay, so a little bit more information regarding uh, the secret sharing schemes. Uh, the <coughs> the schemes we uh, you know we can use uh, you know, need to have the folding you know properties right the, the first one uh, in the scheme we can give a value x right we can share the value using the scheme uh, for example uh, given a value uh, ten right so under the uh, additive secret sharing right if the domain size is uh, one hundred right so for for example the domain of maybe uh, you know over ages right from zero to 99. I don't know what's the oldest person. Anyone knows who's the oldest, what's the age for the oldest person? 124 or something, I, I forgot. But you know, the range, let's say 200, that's probably enough to cover everybody, right? The oldest person. So, so if we want to share, share the age 10 in the group, in the domain of from zero to uh, 200, for example, what should we do? We just, uh, initially we can select a random number, right? In the group uh, from zero to 200, and then you know we can do uh, uh, you know we can use the 200 uh, minus the the 10. Uh, I had to make sure I got everything right. So basically, the 10 is equal to uh, you know to, what's the first number we select? Do you want to give me a number? So we need to select a random number in the group first, right? That's the first secret. Can you give me a number? Can can you give me a number? 25. 25. Okay. So 25 is good. So we can have 25 as the first secret, right? It's randomly selected. And then 25, you know, plus uh, another share. We need to have two shares, right? Second share, give us mod. Uh, the group size now is uh, 201, right? Give us 10. So now you can derive what's the value for the second share, right? So that's called the secret sharing, right? You select one random value from the group, and then you can derive the second share by using that formula, okay? And so each share, alone is a in the, uh, kind of uniformly you know, distributed, right? So that's why they are secure. So that's the idea. So you need to have something you can share the, the value. And you can also need to, uh, you know, based on the number of shares you have, you can also reveal the original value, right? That's called the reveal. And you have the addition. Addition means you can add a number together uh, without knowing the real number, right? So uh, you, you have two values, A and B, right? So A and B are shared. How are you gonna produce, uh, you know, the share of A plus B, right? So the the secret sharing scheme allow you to do the addition without communicating, you know, between the two parties, right? So if the two the shares belong to the two parties, I just above, each one has a share of you know A and B, they can get a share of you know A plus B locally by adding their own share together, right? So that can be done locally. Another one, multiplication by a constant. So uh, if you have, uh, let's say, Alice Bob again, you know, they have, you know, have a share of A, right? They don't know the value A, but they have a share of A, right? Using the example I gave you early. And how do they compute, uh, given a constant value, right? Multiply with A, okay, how to do that? So this can be done, uh, you know, the scheme allow us to do that locally, okay? So there's no communication here, but they have to share the constant at the first place. Uh, if you consider that as a communication, that's fine. But most often, uh, this value has already been pre-shared, right? It's most often, they don't count as a communication. So all these operations can be done locally, you know, by the individual parties. Uh, what is missing here, right? So if we want to solve any computation, right? So this operator is not enough, right? So which operator is missing from this list here? Multiplication, right, of two shared values. So, so here we have addition, right? So you have two shared value A and B. You can do, you can compute the shares of A plus B, right? But here, this you know, this scheme doesn't have a, a multiplication. You know, you cannot do 
uh, let's say you have shares of A and B, you cannot do shares of A times B locally, right? So that's why uh, people develop you know, different protocols to enable the multiplication right, between the you know, two shares. All right, so how you do that? I mean, there are many, uh, there are some classical papers, uh, you know, to depend on how the share is constructed, right? Under Samir, you can do one way. Under the ATC sharing, you do it differently, okay? So, but we can do that, uh, you know, with some kind of communication. <coughs> so one uh, design issue here to minimize communication, we want to, we don't want to use a secure multiplication, right, as, as many, uh, you know, we want to reduce that, you know, as much as we could, you know, to hopefully we can minimize the communication, right? So that's the idea, one of the design ideas we have. All right, so this is the protocol, uh, you know, many of the existing work, you know, based upon, right? So this is the first protocol, uh, you know, for the uh, uh, constant run, right? Constant run, secure comparison, based on, you know, secure sharing, designed by uh, Dangard. Uh, he, he's one well-known uh, per, uh, person in uh, uh, in cryptography and literature. So, so what's the, I will go through this one, and then I can show you, you know, our protocol how it differs you know, from their design. So, in this protocol, uh, the input, right, the input uh, is the uh, you know two shared value, right? We have the a and b. Uh, the notation here, like a zero p, uh, you know, bracket uh, means a zero, right? That's the zeros bit of the input value is a secret share in the domain defined by P, right? So P is a modulus, right? The example I give you about the age, I, I use the, uh, the modulus like two, 201, right? So here we, uh, is a, a general, uh, you know, variable, right, P. And then B is also, uh, you know, shared similarly. And so the output uh, is the C, the bracket. Generally speaking, the bracket C means that the C is shared. Uh, the C represent the regional value, the bracket C represent the share value. Uh, the P there, the subscript, means the group size, right? So where the value, the share came from. Uh, so if we see you to one, then we can say, you know, A, um, you know, A is greater than B, and zero, you know, otherwise, right? So this is the input, output, right? How do we do this computation, right? So here's the, the steps involved. Uh, so the so how do we do comparison? Um, you know, in general, right? So think about the comparison at the bit level, right? If you have a two numbers, right, A and B, uh, how can I tell, right? So let's say A is bigger than B. So what, what's the first step? You know, in general, don't worry about the security, right? Don't worry about that. Just in general, at the bit level, right? If we want to compare two number, uh, what kind of operation you want to do? So the first thing we need to know is the, uh, you know, which bit location, right? So, so one thing, uh, the goal there, right, the ultimate goal is that we want to locate, right? So the most significant bit location where the two numbers are different, right? So the, mo the, the first, right, the, in the first most significant, uh, you know, significant bit location, right? How do we identify that? To identify that location, we need to do an SR first, right? So to answer the two number, and the answer will give us the locations, right, where two bits are different, right? Now we need to locate where's the first location. Once we got the first location, you know, we can go to either A or B, right? If we go to A, if the A, that location is one, the B is one, which means A is bigger than B, right? Does it make sense, everyone? So if we go to B, right, if B is uh, one, you know, B is bigger, B is zero, you know, B is smaller, right? But you get the point, right? So the most important operate, you know, uh, the most important information we need to find is really the, the most significant location where the two values uh, differ, right? <coughs> so how do we identify that? The first step, we need to compute the, the SR operation, right? The SR operation, uh, again, all these operations here can be done securely. I'm not gonna give you the detail how to do securely because this uh, involves lots of, uh, uh, you know, uh, information, uh, I don't think we have the time to discuss that, but just assume, right, to understand the concept, you don't know the detail, uh, you don't need to understand the detail, but uh, let's assume the SR operator here can be done securely, right? So the first step, we apply the SR operation uh, to find the, uh, all the locations, right, where the bits are different, right, between the two value A and B. 
so the next location, uh, let me show you the, the example here, right? So here we have an example uh, like the A and B here, right, in the binary representation. So uh, after the, the SR operator there, uh, I don't have a pointer to point in you. Maybe I can use the, my mouse here. Right, so this line here, you know, you do SR, then the E becomes, you know, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Again, here I show you the regional value, but when you execute the protocol, right, the parties don't know the, the E value at all. Right, so this protocol here is executed by three parties. Right, so each party is going to do the same thing here with their own share, right? So each party, what I mean by same thing, same means they perform the same computation, but based on their individual shares. Right, so I have three parties. Uh, three party can execute this SR operation, and uh, the input is the share values, right? So they don't know anything about A and B, right? At the end, what they have is the the share of the E value, right? Again, they don't know anything about E, but they, they only know the shares of the E, okay? So everything is still secure. Uh, the next operation, this one is called the the pre or operation, right? So this operation gonna uh, produce this value f here, right? So this f here, you know, the first value is zero. So uh, the the first one, right, for the e. So that's the uh, the most significant location where the two values are different, right? In over in, in my example here, right? So after that location, this value f here, everything become one. Okay. So you, if you do this operation, right? Again, uh, you know, I ignoring all the details about how do you gonna perform this pre or operation, uh, you know, securely. But let's assume we can do that securely, right? So at the end, this is the value for f. Uh, then another thing we're gonna do uh, is this, uh, you know, g vector, right? In this vector, uh, the other value are zero. Only one value is one, right? And so that value indicating, right? So the the most significant bit location you know, where two values are different, right? So this vector is very important. When, after we got this vector here, the g vector, you can multiply g you know, with a here, right? You do a multiplication, uh, bitwise multiplication, right? So once you do the multiplication, you can uh, retrieve, I think I need to update um, you know, this uh, example here. I think I made some changes, but actually this h here, you need to have one here. We will multiply G, right? So G multiply with A here. What you got? You got one, right? So the this location here is one. Then the other location is zero. If you sum them together, you got a value one, right? So one indicating you know A is greater than B, right? So that's the idea. Does it make sense? I know I'm kind of ignoring lots of details, uh, but I'd like to give you some high level, uh, you know, understanding about this protocol here. Again, this is a typo here. Uh, I, I, I made some changes to my example, so, but I didn't update this value h here. This h here, the second location here, need to be 1 instead of 0. So it should be 0, 1, you know, 0, 0. Okay, and then if you combine all the shares together, then you should get 1. Right, again, here, uh, at this moment, right, everything is bitwise shared. Right, uh, to finish the computation, you want to make sure you only have one share. Uh, for the whole number h, so this is what you got here. You want to have one share for the value for h. Okay, so that share uh, in our example here is one, meaning a is greater than b. So I will go a little bit uh, faster. Uh, so so let me talk about our design. So you, you saw this one, right? So this one is executed by every party. So that's why I mentioned at the beginning uh, the protocol, the existing protocol, are symmetric, right? Uh, because everybody doing the same thing based on their own share. The only thing different is their own share. All right. So we're gonna break this, uh, you know, symmetry, you know, to improve the efficiency of the protocol. Right. So here is the over design of the protocol uh, overview. So what do we want to achieve? So the protocol allows a group of three parties, P1, P2, P3, uh, to securely uh, compare two numbers, A and B, uh, owned by you know P1, P2. Okay. I'm not assuming the value are shared among all three parties. Only two parties share, the, I mean, has the private value A and B, and they want to compare you know, which one's bigger. So the, the party number three here, just to facilitate you know, the computation, the secure computation, right? But they, he or she doesn't hold anything about you know, A and B. <coughs> so the, re, the, the protocol gonna return one, uh, you know, if uh, you know, P uh, to P1, P2, you know, if A greater than B. Uh, so this is the outcome. 
for protocol here. Uh, <coughs> another important thing we did is called the uh, problem transformation, right? So we, we transform comparison to a summation problem. You know, we are not comparing them directly. So we use a summation, uh, we compare the sum of the, the bits, uh, you know, to make it as a, the same outcome as the comparison. So I can show you, you know, what's the uh, problem transformation we had. Uh, the first one, given two integers, right, A and B here, uh, you know, with L bit, you know, domain size, uh, we compute the alpha, alpha is two times A plus one, and then we compute the beta, right, beta is two times B here, and the I denotes the, the most uh, significant bit location, right, where A I, you know, alpha I not equal to, R, to beta I. Right, again, that's the location we need to locate, right, if we want to compare which number is bigger or smaller. And this H here uh, is an L plus one bit, you know, binary vector, uh, where, you know, HI uh, is equal to one, and HJ equal to zero, right, for the other location, right? The only one location is one for this uh, H vector. Uh, remember the H vector we compute uh, here? So at the end, we had the H vector here, that's the same thing. <coughs> Okay, so additionally, uh, we define a couple, uh, you know, values here. So this, this is the summation we have. The uh, S alpha, so S alpha gonna uh, sum uh, the individual bits of the value alpha, right? So we had the alpha, and so the S alpha is the summation, basically the number of bits, you know, set uh, in number uh, represented by alpha. Right, uh, another one, uh, S alpha prime. So this one uh, is a little bit different, right? So this one is equal to, you know, HI, uh, no, it's HJ, right? HJ minus, you know, alpha J in mod two. So what this one gives us, remember uh, what's H, right? H, only one location for H has the bit one, right? All the other are zero. So the zero minus, you know, a, a, uh, AJ mod two, you know, doesn't change anything to AJ. Okay, so zero minus one, give you minus one in the group of, you know, uh, Z2. Under that group, you still got one back, right? So zero minus anything, give you the same value back, right? So zero minus one, give you one. Zero minus zero, give you zero, okay? So that's the reason we use the group two, you know, to do this kind of computation. So what you have here is that, you know, S alpha prime uh, is also a, a summation uh, of the set of bits after uh, you perform this uh, H, HJ, you know, minus, you know, alpha, alpha J. I, I, I'm going to give you a little bit more information here. So here is over key observation, right? So we define the value, you know, F here. So F is equal to, you know, S alpha plus, uh, S alpha minus S alpha prime plus one divided by two. So if we define this way, then F equal to one, you know, indicating, you know, A is greater than or equal to B. All right, and then if f equal to zero, then you know a gonna be less than b, right? So this is over uh, problem transformation. So we transform the comparison to this kind of like the summation problem, right? The s alpha, s alpha prime, right? So based on these two values, we derive the comparison uh, outcome, right? So here's why we can do that. Uh, for example, according to the definition of h and the modulo two uh, operation, right? The h i minus a i. Uh, mod two is equal to one minus ai. Remember, the hui is the only location that has bit one, right? So if we do this operation, then that's what you got. Uh, the other operation, like the other location, hj minus aj mod two give you aj. It doesn't matter what's the value for aj, right? So what that means is that only one bit of alpha got changed, right? So if that bit is one, you change that to zero, right? If that bit is zero at the beginning, you just change to one. Make sense? So, so the difference between this is S alpha, S alpha prime is by one bit, right? So, so if S alpha, uh, the, the i's location has the one bit already, uh, you know, this, su this subtraction here give you one, okay? So, uh, which means uh, when alpha i equal to one, right? This implying, right, the alpha is greater than, I mean, a is greater than b, right? Because the i's location is the most significant bit location where a and b are different, right? So that's the most significant bit location, right? If that location for a uh, is one, clearly a is greater than b, right? 
So this is the observation we have. So on the other hand, right, if a i is equal to zero, then s alpha minus s alpha prime give us minus one, right? So this is the reason why here we add a, a plus one here, right, to make sure uh, this number uh, is uh, either zero, you know, or one, right? Because the outcome, you know, we want to preserve is zero and one, right? So one indicating greater than, you know, equal to, right? Zero indicating, you know, less than, right? So these are the two values we want to preserve. So we don't want to have any native values. We cannot represent native values, uh, you know, in, in the uh, under the secret sharing schemes. <coughs> so this is the transformation we have. Uh, so another, uh, you know, here I'm just highlighting, you know, a few design principles we have. Uh, you know, another one, the the SO operation. Again, we need to perform the SO operation, right? As I show you from the existing uh, in protocol, right? But the SO operation can be done locally. Uh, you don't need any communication between the parties, right? So this uh, we can minimize the communication by, you know, using the share in Z2 instead of share of ZP, you know, other, you know, other group, right? If we use a share on other group, then we have to communicate among the parties, right, to increase the, the complexity. Uh, another thing, uh, we want to dynamically switch groups between, you know, Z2 and Zn. Right, so uh, to minimize, to maximize the computation in Z2, right? Everything can be done in Z2. There's no communication required, right? So this is the observation we have. Um, so group switching is done obviously, right? You have to be careful. You don't want to leak any information when you switch the groups, uh, you know, through randomizations. And also, as I showed you a moment ago, right? Transforming the comparison to the summation problem, right? So these are the techniques we combine, you know, to design uh, you know, much more efficient you know, solution, okay? <coughs> so here are the high level, uh, you know, summary of our, uh, yes? Sir. So if you back up two steps, I think the key here, we can't learn what, you know, what i is, if alpha i is equal to one. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. we, you know, we know that there is some alpha i that's equal to one, but I'm we sure. don't know which i it is. No, you don't. Else. That's right. You don't know. So we have to hide the, the I the ISO location, right? How do we hide that? So that's part of the protocol, right? So we need to design in a way that we can hide the ISO location. So I'm gonna show you where to hide that ISO location. <coughs> you cannot tell anything. At the end you learn I mean you if that alpha I is equal one, all that tells you is that A is less than or equal to B, which is what you were gonna learn anyway. Mm, sure, sure. You don't know the location where they differ at the B, you know. <coughs> All right, so uh, the, the steps, these are the main steps we have, right? The first, we had to do uh, input transformation, right? So I show you, you know, the two times A plus one, right? Then two times B. The reason being, we don't want to have uh, equality. If we do have equality between two, uh, our protocol is gonna leak some information, right? So this is one thing we had to avoid. That's why we do that. Uh, and then we're gonna do uh, compute the bit y difference. That's the oper SO operator. We need to, uh, you know, this competition need to be done. Uh, and then the next step, we're gonna locate the most significant uh, bit difference. Uh, then we're gonna derive the S alpha prime. Uh, and at the end, we're gonna do a shared transformation. Mm. So these are the key steps we have. Um, <coughs> so so now I'm gonna go through the the steps uh, quickly here. Uh, so now you can see, right, the computation here is not uh, symmetric, right? So the P1 gonna do some computation very different than the computation done by P2 and then, you know, P3, right? They're all performing different computation instead of everybody doing the same thing as I showed you previously, okay? So here, the P1, uh, you know, transform, you know, his local value, right? I'm starting with the, uh, again, uh, using the previous value, a is equal to 15, uh, b is equal to 5, right? I'm using the same example. So after you do the transformation, right, this is the value you got for alpha, right, based on the, you know, a and b we have. Uh, and then you compute the s alpha. Uh, again, s alpha is just, you know, the number of bits have been set in, in uh, alpha there, okay? So you have five bits here, s1, then you got one, you got five here. So, and the rest of the number are the random values you need to use to, uh, when you do the group switching, you need to mask, right, the, the real values. So these are the values kind of serve as a mask you know, to hide the information that could be leaked by communicating among the parties. 
So I'm not going into detail here, but I just show you what's the purpose of these randomized values here. Uh, for the P2, again, uh, do an in input transformation, right? Double the input, and then generate the sh shares, right? So these are the shares of, uh, you know, value beta in the group of, you know, Z2, right? So everything here, uh, you know, in the group of Z and 1s. So to minimize the uh, communication complexity. So step number three here, now they're going to doing the the ICR operation, right? Remember, uh, the the first really important operation is the ICR, right? To compute the, you know, to find out the locations where the bits are different. So so here, you're going to find the E. So this is done locally. That's why I had the notation here, the PJ here, right? PJ means uh, either party one or two, right? They do the same thing here based on their own local shares, right? So no communication, you know, whatsoever. And then, uh, this one here, the the B here is the randomization. You are randomizing, so you use the R I. R I is just one bit, okay? Uh, so you randomizing the, the the value E here, so that you know the party number three when look at the E, uh, he won't be able to tell, right? Which bit location A and B are different, right? So when we look at number three here, number three here, uh, you know P three need to reconstruct the, the real value of E here. Not the real value, but need to reconstruct the E, randomize E, right? Has been masked the E here. So if we don't have a step B here, then the E will be leaked to, to P3, right? That's something we don't want. Uh, and then, so here's the group switching part, right? So now the shares, uh, you know, the P3 gonna generate shares in group of uh, Z and 2, right? So this is another group we use no longer in, uh, you know, Z2 here. So, because the subsequent computation require a bigger, you know, share size, we can no longer use the smaller share size at the beginning to compute the SR. So, so here, uh, but if we don't do the, the mass here at the step uh, 3B here, then P3 gonna learn, right? So the number of locations, A and B are different, right? The B locations. Uh, so you generate a share and then send back to the party P1, P2. And then the P1, P2 here, and so J is the index for you know, P1 and P2. So P1 and P2 are gonna do the same thing here by uh, you know, re-randomize the value, right? Remember the, the E vector had been randomized at the beginning, right? Before sending to P3. So when the new shear, uh, you know, new shear came back from uh, P3, then the P1, P2 gonna re, uh, you know, de-randomize the value to get the real you know, E1 back, you know, E vector back. So here is the E vector here, and then uh, I think my time is kind of running out, so I will go uh, a little bit quicker. Uh, so you have the E vector here, and then uh, we're gonna compute this gamma vector, right? So the rest of the steps is to allow us to generate the vector U here, right? This vector U here, you can look at the one location is zero, right? So that location there uh, corresponding to, you know, the most significant bit location between A and B, you know, where they, they are different. Okay, so the other location, like the S value here, is actually random values. They are not the same random value. I just want to use X to indicating they are randomized values, right? So by looking at the S value, you cannot tell anything about, you know, the, the actual value we are hiding. So all these computation here are done, uh, you know, obliviously, right? So the, the server don't know anything about, you know, what's going on underneath the shares. Okay, but this is the, what happened under the shares, okay? So, um, again, uh, this step number five is the share switching again. Uh, and then the step number seven, we got back uh, the H vector. Remember, the H vector is the one we need uh, to, uh, you know, transform the summations, right? So in the summations, uh, if you remember the equation we have, we have a HI minus, you know, alpha I, right? Hj minus alpha z, right? So that's the transformation we need. We need to get the h vector. <coughs> so, so let me go through this, uh, you know, rather quickly a little bit. So I had to skip something here. So at the end, right? So the step number nine here, we're gonna compute the, uh, you know, s alpha prime, right? And so this one is equal to four, you know, based on the. Uh, you know, the example we have. And at the end, we can derive, you know, the F value. F is the, uh, the comparison outcome, right? Again, everything here is a secret shared, right? You cannot tell exactly, you know, what's the comparison outcome. 
so uh, the last step we have, uh, so we have one more step here, try to convert the shear you know, back to the normal uh, computation, right? So you may, your computation may start with a, a, a specific domain, you know, where the shear came from, right? So at the end, when we return the outcome, you also want to perform, you know, preserve the same consistency. Otherwise, you cannot do the subsequent you know, computation, right? So here, the last two steps here we have is to uh, convert the shear you know, back to the original domain. Right, so that's the step we have here. <clears throat> okay, so I will skip something here. Uh, so this is a summary of you know what I talk about. You know, among these steps, it's kind of complicated here. Uh, I will share the slides with you. Uh, you know, after the talk here, but it's the same information. But I just group all the example together to show you. Uh, you know how it works. Uh, so here is the table uh, of our comparison. Right. Uh, so we compare with. Uh, the existing solution, the first uh, five of them are the constant wrong, uh, you know, comparison protocol, secure comparison protocol. So, uh, you know, these are the, you know, one column representing the number wrong required right, to perform the secure computation. Uh, the Dungar one required 44 rounds, and so these are the, the number of bits need to be, you know, transferred. And so, uh, you know, here we have like five round instead of 44 round. And then you know we drop the leading term as well, right? So you know all this protocol uh, is bounded by you know big O L uh, you know L <coughs> square, right? So L is the number of bits in representing A and B. So we we are able to drop that. You know we become you know L log L. So to improve the efficiency, you know quite a lot. All right, and so uh, there are some uh, variations we are considering, you know, at the moment. Another one, uh, we have another version and that trade off, you know, between the run and the communication complexity. We can say by one more run, right? So this one, the current one, is a five run, right? So we can reduce that to four run by, you know, increasing the complexity a little bit, right? The, the new complexity we have is going to be L square, big O L square, but still the constant term is very small. Uh, compared to the existing solution, so it's still very uh, efficient. Another protocol in this table I forgot to mention is the share mine. The share mine is one of the uh, commercial tools out there, you know, from Europe. Uh, you know, their protocol is not constant run. I just want to show you uh, what's the current state of the art, uh, the non-constant run protocol, right? So this protocol here has, uh, you know, three. Um, so there are two different versions, right? The the most efficient version is three round, you know, plus, you know, log two L, right? That's their complexity. So uh, you know, if you have a very small L, then you know this sequential one, you know, can be better. But if the L is big, and then you know, over protocol is still better, right? So we just want to see, uh, even for the sequential one, right? Uh, the non-constant round one, uh, where over performance compared, you know, with them. <coughs> So um, you, we also look into uh, you know protocol uh, secure against malicious adversaries, right? Uh, so the current design is only secure under the semi-honest model, right? And we expecting the party follow the protocol. So what if they don't follow the protocol, right? What should we do? So we have another version, not based on uh, additive secret sharing. It's actually based on uh, some mere secret sharing, right? Use some kind of commitment scheme, uh, verifiable you know scheme, right? To make sure to make sure they are, uh, you know, kind of like secure against malicious models, uh, uh, malicious adversaries. Mm. All right, so I just touched a little bit. Uh, so some of the open, uh, you know, open question uh, still out there is uh, how do we design, you know, verifiable uh, secret sharing based on additive secret shares, right? So they are verifiable secret sharing scheme based on Samir, but nothing based on additive secret sharing. Uh, how do we achieve fault tolerance, right, under additive secret sharing? And then uh, there's some new research uh, talk about, you know, do executions, right, against uh, uh, malicious behaviors, right? <clears throat> so based on the comparison protocol, we can design more advanced protocols, like, you know, privacy preserving, you know, frank recommendations, you know, social network domain, uh, you know, some kind of sorting algorithms, uh, you know, query processing, and, you know, authentication tools uh, based on comparison, you know, protocols. So if we can speed up comparison, then we can speed up, you know, these uh, applications as well. Uh, so, so here, uh, you know, 
two of my PhD students are working on this, and this is their contribution. They cannot be here, but I need to acknowledge their effort. And uh, without them, then I cannot be here to talk to you, right? I do maybe talk something else. But these are the existing papers we compare. And uh, again, I think that's all I have, and uh, sorry to take a little bit longer than I uh, needed. But I still skip uh, some of the technical details. So, yeah. So thank you. <laughs> We have time for a couple of quick questions. If anybody has any questions, otherwise we could take questions offline and out in the halls. If anybody has any? No? Just wondering if you attempted to implement the protocol or like what tools you used to implement. So uh, we just use uh, the, the GMP library. Uh, I don't know if you heard about that one. It's a big number uh, library. It's one of the fattest out there. So it's called the GMP uh, mm -hmm. precision, uh, I think, number, uh, you know, to handle large numbers. We also use the C programming language. You know, C with G GMP, they are compatible. So we, we use that to implement our protocols uh, using three server. We have the local three machines locally, so we can run our protocol you know, uh, in that setup. Any other? Okay, well, well, I'd like to thank you. And if you ever think it feels like it's been a long time since you've been here at Purdue, you can have this to remember that Purdue's been around a lot longer. Uh, a lot longer this than is me. <laughs> Cup celebrating our 150th anniversary. And thank, thank you. Thank you for speaking and at our uh, thank you so much. 100th anniversary season. Sure. Hopefully, I can come back for the 200th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.